Well, good morning, and uh, thanks for uh, coming together for, uh, I would say, the next generation town hall. You know, we've been doing these on Teams, which is good and effective, and we still have a big part of our workforce on Teams for this one this morning, but doing one live here uh, is good, and, and we want to kind of work our way back uh, into this uh, as we go around and, and talk to different people and, and, and organize what I call, every time I go to a senior leader meeting, the best team in the Pentagon, and that's PNR. The most important team in the Pentagon, which is PNR, because everything that PPNO does or everything that INL does, uh, everything that aviation does, it connects to us, right? And, and, and without us, they would not be able to accomplish uh, the goals of the Marine Corps. So um, we're going to start uh, by saying, and we'll go to the next slide, uh, th this is the team, right? This is part of the team. Uh, the team from the Pentagon. Now, I just got back from a trip uh, to Kansas City and to Indianapolis. Uh, hopefully when I go out there next time, maybe we can get one of these uh, pictures taken with them. But uh, this is something I hope, I know it was probably a pain to get a, uh, your time off, to get all the way over to the other side of the Pentagon from PNR and to get on, onto the river entrance steps and to take the photo, but I always do this at every unit I go to because five, six, seven years from now, you all have a copy of this photo. These are the people that you work with every day, side by side, and, and it will bring back some pretty cool memories. And so it's something I think that you can take with you. And I'm waiting for my hard copy because I'm gonna get this sucker framed and it's gonna be hanging up right in my office there with the other unit pictures that I have. So th this is you know, the, the best team in the Marine Corps uh, at headquarters, PNR. So next slide. This is what we're gonna talk about today. And before we get into the formalities, I think uh, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this uh, all hands is to kind of unveil publicly some of the policy changes that uh, I've signed over the past couple months in response to feedback from you all. Uh, and to work that the Tiger team, the four Tiger teams did. Um, but before we do that, um, what I want to do is bring Denny Martino up. Come on up, Denny. We, we all work hard. We all deserve recognition, and I want to thank all of you for all the effort and energy you put into uh, to things here at PNR. But every once in a while, we get an opportunity to recognize someone for uh, a really good job and, uh, and, and, and present awards. And so this is an opportunity for us to recognize Denny. And, and this award was actually submitted by uh, some employees that work for you who are in the National Guard who went and did their National Guard duties. You allowed them to go do that. Uh, and as a result of that, it's a recognition from the National Guard back to you to say thank you for supporting uh, that. So uh, if we could, attention to orders, we'll read the citation. Office of the Secretary of Defense, employer support of the Guard and Reserve, recognizes Denny Martino, PNR, RFE, USMC, as a patriotic employer for contributing to national security and protecting liberty and freedom by supporting employee participation in America's National Guard and Reserve Force. All right, so yeah, suitable for framing, a little certificate. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. And then you get a little pen oh. you can wear on your lapel. Okay. And then we will add to that oh, thank you, sir. our coin. All right, so stand at ease. <laughs> Please take your seats. Um, you know, Danny. As you all likely know, uh, this is probably the busiest time of year for him as he collects up nickels and dimes and couch out of the couch cushions and spreads them out evenly to get us a, as close to 100% obligation as possible. All right, so I, I alluded to uh, policies uh, that have been recently signed, and I just wanted to kind of go through them and talk about them. Now, what I'm not going to do is... Um, is go through every line of these policies, nor does today's brief constitute you fully understanding these policies. So this is a general overview of 
potentially in some cases why we did what we did in terms of changing policy. Some of them were just reissued uh, with, with some updated information. But it's incumbent upon all of you, uh, these five policies, there's a new policy for telework, there's a new policy for workplace standards, there's a new policy for uh, anonymous resolution, which I'll talk about here in a minute, uh, a new policy for civilian hiring, and a new policy for civilian fitness. It's incumbent upon you to get a copy of those, read them, you probably already have. Uh, the policy for telework, we held back on distribution until after this meeting, because that's the one that I really want to talk about uh, in, in a little more detail than the others. But I'll give you an overview, maybe if there was a previous policy, what it contained, and then what we changed, and highlight kind of the logic behind it. And I will tell you, you know, we're nine months removed from the DOC survey that we did when I first got here. Um, and uh, I told you all in a previous uh, town hall that when I do these surveys, I know your time is valuable and the information and inputs that you put into these policy, uh, these, um, these surveys uh, means a lot to you, therefore it should mean a lot to me. And, and so I want to tell you and show you that I take those things seriously. We formed up, like I said, the four Tiger teams that looked at um, leadership, they looked at civilian workplace uh, flexibility, they looked at civilian hiring, and they looked at training. Uh, and they did a really good job. You know, I would commend those folks from both the Pentagon and also remote. There were some participants from Indianapolis and Kansas City that contributed to those Tiger teams that took the feedback and looked at it in great detail and made some recommendations on how we can uh, do things differently in order to make things, and it really, the DOC survey is more about equal opportunity in, in, through that lens is, uh, is what we did. Some of these policies will address some of those concerns. There are other things, particularly uh, civilian management and training that will have things that we will continue to deliver to PNR. Um, we are going to transform some of the mentorship, some of the training, some of the opportunities for the workforce. Uh, so that's, that's forthcoming as well. But uh, what I'm going to highlight today are policy changes that were written in direct response to uh, your feedback on the DOC survey. So it's, it's policy memorandum 5TAC24. It's entitled Telework Policy. Uh, it replaced it, it superseded the previous policy, which um, contained a separate policy for uniformed personnel and, and civilian personnel. Uh, it limited everyone in PNR, regardless of your branch, division, mission, to two days of telework per pay period, and it pro prohibited supervisors from actually conducting telework. Um, and that was just. It, the whole idea behind telework is to make the force more productive. Uh, and, and it also, it, it, in, in the previous policy, it was a little counterproductive. And I, I, I heard it uh, from the surveys on the DOCs. So the new policy that uh, we will distribute uh, at the end of this, um, at the end of this session, so you can read it for yourself. And I encourage you to read it. It's very specific. It's very detailed. It's been through a lot of uh, chops in terms of all the supervisors had the opportunity to chop on it. Uh, it brings our telework policy up to the what you have across the federal government um, in terms of like flexibility and, and uh, authorization. It combines civilian and military. So now there's one policy, uh, not separate for uniformed and civilian. It's the same for all. Uh, it allows you up to eight days of telework per pay period. Uh, with supervisor approval. Uh, it allows uh, the military to conduct situational telework, which would be a situation where um, something comes up, like, uh, like, like, like I was traveling last week. So I was conducting situational telework uh, at the airport, at the gate, or uh, you know, it, it, as, as I was trying to continue to do my job while I was remote from the office. Um, and you know, there's other situational telework situations. You may catch COVID, right? And now you have to situationally telework. Anyway, uh, that is specifically written inside of the policy. And then 
it is, uh, highlights the fact that telework is not a uh, right, it's not an entitlement, but it's a specific um, opportunity to enhance the workforce productivity by allowing flexible work hours with the technology that we have today. And it's really a, a byproduct of what we saw that we had to do during COVID. And, and it kind of changed the dynamic at the, uh, at the office. And so um, this is just a quick overview. This is not everything that's in there. Uh, it does require a deliberate telework plan be negotiated and signed between you and your supervisor. It pushes down to the lowest level of supervision, authorization to, within the limits of the eight days, establish a, a telework plan for the individual workers. Um, and uh, it, it allows the supervisor and the supervised to talk about, you know, based on my job that I do, the technology that I have, and the work schedule and the productivity and the mission that I'm assigned, establish a telework uh, plan. And it's required to be updated every year. So uh, it's not in the written text of the policy, but I'm telling everyone today, by the end of the month of September, every uh, employee should meet with and discuss and establish a new telework. You may have one on file. Um, the, it's a new policy, so we have to have a new uh, agreement. Uh, everyone by the end of September should, in conjunction with your assessment and your appraisal timelines, have a new telework policy in the system uh, with an agreement. So uh, anyway, I, I, again, I encourage you to read the actual policy to understand it. We will, we will send that out, uh, broadcast that out here at the end of the meeting. So that's the first policy that I'll talk about. Next, let's talk about uh, the, the workplace standards policy. So there was a policy in place about workplace standards. It included telework policy and guidelines. That, that's now separate in a, under a telework policy. Uh, it established core hours from 9.30 to 14.30, uh, standard tour of duty from 8 to 16.30. Um, the ability to approve some sort of alternate work schedule as applicable if you want uh, to come in earlier to work or stay later. Uh, and um, the supervisors will determine uh, employee schedules to ensure adequate, adequate coverage. It establishes like what, what the minimum coverage is and that's also in the telework policy for each branch. Uh, the new policy is pretty similar. No radical changes to core hours or standard two or duty, but it does allow and, and uh, put in place the ability to do a maxi flex approved work schedule. What that means is you may adjust your arrival and departure times as, as required to meet the overall 80 hour work week, week plan based on things that are unique to either your job or your life or you know, a combination thereof. Uh, and the max flex, if it is requested to be uh, approved, the supervisor will have a discussion, but ultimately uh, Mr. Gardner will sign off on any MaxFlex uh, plans that, uh, that, that are being requested. And so just like the telework policy, this is new with some adjustments. I encourage all of you to get a, a copy of it. That, this has been distributed um, and, uh, and read through it. And, and you know, I didn't hit this on the previous policy, but if you have questions about what's written in the policy. Uh, I met with all the, the senior leaders this morning to kind of talk, uh, talk through it, and they had some questions. If you have questions, you know, go up through your chain, but don't hesitate as I walk through your spaces or, you know, we're, we engage in conversation. If you have questions about it, uh, let me know. Um, you know, I won't carry the policy around with me, um, but, but if you have it, you want to, like, talk about a specific part of it, feel free to, to engage me in conversation about, about that. Um, because I looked through every line, every, every sentence, the, everything is, was deliber deliberately written in there for a purpose. And if you have a question about that, uh, let me know. Okay, the next policy we're going to talk about is uh, the anonymous resolution policy. So I'm an aviator. And in aviation units, we have uh, this program called AnyMouse. And, and honestly, it's not necessarily designed to handle and resolve issues, let's say, with regards to, you know, things that are, 
I mean, it's designed to solve any problems, but it's really focused on safety in an aviation unit. And it gives people an opportunity in, a, um, in an anonymous fashion to report something that's impacting something that's going on at, in the workplace and without fear of reprisal or um, without fear of you know, someone like singling you out. And uh, in the case of some safety issues, you know, it may be culturally based, it may be procedurally based, it, it can be anything. And, and it, it's, it's always taken very seriously and, and the, the CO, and I'm not a CO, I'm just a DC, uh, has to address anything that's submitted anonymously and then provide feedback. And because it's anonymous, the feedback will go to everybody. Um, I, found, I felt that a lot of the things that were brought up inside of the DOC survey could have been mitigated real time, and you don't wait until like, uh, we do this thing every two years, real time through some sort of anonymous uh, process of, of submission. And it's complicated because we have Marines in Quantico, we have Marines in Indianapolis, we have Marines in the Pentagon, Kansas City, we have Marines in San Diego, we have Marines in Camp Lejeune. I mean, like PNR's expansive size and, and scope across seven states uh, is really hard to get like one box um, for everyone to be able to deposit it in. So we have established an anonymous online submission methodology. Uh, you can actually fill out a form and mail it. The mailing address is in the policy. Uh, or there, there'll be a box in the D ring uh, where you can just fill it out if you're in the Pentagon and drop it in the box. And, and you know, we will continue to monitor those things as they come in. Uh, we will look at them. Uh, they'll come to me. We'll come up with a plan of action. Uh, if, if, uh, and you don't have to be anonymous, too. If you want direct feedback, you can you know, put your name on it and we can get back with you uh, directly. Um, but I, I think it, it's an opportunity to, in a, in a more rapid fashion, respond to issues instead of waiting for the interval between these surveys, okay? Um, and so anyway, uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and it doesn't have to identify problems. It can identify uh, just ways to do things better. Like, I, I, wanna, I think we should do X better or Y better, or you know, I think your policy about you know, workplace standards is terrible. Uh, like whatever you wanna do in terms of uh, submission, it's a way for you to provide feedback to the team at PNR at the command level to, to respond to uh, issues that you may see. So that's out there. It's a really short policy, one pager, um, and um, hopefully it'll work for you. The civilian hiring policy, the old policy used to only apply to 14 and 15 hires. Now it applies to all hiring actions. It's really a help. I, I, would, I would label it a collection of best practices of hiring uh, to, to make the hiring process more standardized and uh, more effective. And so I'm not going to read through all the new policy issues. If you are involved in uh, hiring, this is a policy that you really need to read and review. It will help you working with this policy hand in hand with m and and Michael and his team in, in there. Uh, I think it, it, we're going to try to uh, streamline and, and improve uh, our hiring process so we can get rid of uh, and eliminate all of the vacancies or as many of the vacancies as, as possible uh, inside of our organization. And then there's no slide for the last one. It's the civilian fitness policy. It kind of dovetails into uh, the other ones. It touches, I would say, and impacts the others. But there was, there was really, you know, I wanted to codify in paper an understanding like there's mythology about fitness. There's like, can I get time off to go to the gym? You know, what about smoking cessation? Can, you know, how, so, so we've combined it all into, it's about a two page uh, policy. It's completely voluntary. So this is not me standing up here telling you you're going to go PT, uh, but I would encourage you to PT. Um, it allows you to be excused from your duty uh, for, a, for a pretty uh, healthy amount of time uh, in order to participate in health activities. And it, it outlines them. It can be physical fitness, going to the gym. That's kind of what everyone assumes it's about. But it could also be health education. It could be intervention. Uh, and I said smoking cessation. Um, you know, there's a fit to win 
down in the uh, De Lorenzo Health Clinic for, uh, that, that you can take advantage of. It's, they've actually got some really good stuff down there. It could be physical therapy, it could be preventative health, it could be wellness. It's very broad. Things that apply to you that make you a healthier, more fit uh, person would fall into this uh, policy. Um, and it allows you f 59 minutes three times a week um, w where you're, you're not going to be charged leave and you can go do ac these, ac these type of activities. Uh, and like I said, it's voluntary. However, you do have to, there's a, there's a form that you have to fill out and sign and route with your, um, your supervisor to say, you know, here's my plan. Um, and it does require like a one-year re renewal. I would just encourage you to have an active conversation with your supervisor on what is your plan for your health uh, and your fitness and your wellness. Um, you know, uh, it's a very important uh, aspect uh, in my life, uh, fitness is, and I would encourage you all to uh, take the same approach. Uh, I, have, I find that if I work out and I maintain fitness, I'm more productive at, at work, I'm more productive at home, I'm a better person to be around. My wife yells at me, she's like, you need to go ride your bike, you're being grumpy. Uh, if, I, if I lack opportunities, sometimes when the schedule gets busy, to PT. Um, so uh, this is a, an opportunity for, that, that I wanted to provide to you all to be able to um, leverage the time that you would normally be required to be at work to take some of that time and, and incorporate a, a fitness uh, plan. So those are the five uh, policies that are new. Uh, I wanted to publicly tell, expose everyone to them. You probably have read some of them that have been distributed. Uh, the rest uh, will be distributed at the end of this meeting. Um, and so with that, um, I, I would like to now uh, turn the mic over to uh, the group uh, and ask if anyone has any questions. It doesn't have to be related to the policies. It can be related to anything at all. Um, this is an opportunity to, uh, to, to kind of get together as a team and, and talk about things. So we have microphones here in the uh, room. Uh, if you're going to ask a question, just raise your hand. We'll bring the mic to you. Um, we were originally scheduled to end at 10, but we can go until 10.30, so don't let the time um, limit your uh, input or your questions. And the first question is always the hardest uh, to, to kind of open the un... So, and then for those online, um, I have no interface or interaction. I can't see anything. So you'll have to just speak up, uh, unmute your mic and, and come in and hopefully the speakers will broadcast your question. Nothing. Or we can end early. That's fine too. Acceptance speech. Hey, the other thing I was going to mention this: um, we have an election year going on, right? Uh, and we have mandatory political training online. You should all uh, know about that. It's required by law that we get trained. There are some restrictions for, on us as government employees with regards to what we can and can't do in terms of political interaction. Um, just make sure you're conducting that training. And then if you have questions about that, uh, let us know. It, to me, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, but I've been through a number of elections uh, throughout my career. For some of you, it may be your first one that you have or, or a, a new one. Um, just be very cognizant about particularly what you can't do, because there, there will be people watching, and they will, they will try to turn it into a political thing if you do the wrong thing. Um, and all these policies that we have are based on the federal government policies of the current administration, particularly telework. Uh, if, if things change politically, the administration changes, and the rules change, it won't be like an overnight thing, but it might change we may have to adjust that. So just for, for what it's worth, we serve at the pleasure of the president and his administration and whatever that uh, administration directs is what we will, we will follow. And I think, and I'll just leave it at that. I think you all understand what I'm, what I'm trying to say there.
well, man, I've got nothing. Well, then I will end because I know your time is valuable and uh, I don't want to waste it. But I do want to say thank you to all of you for what you do. Uh, I know everyone in here is working hard. I'm working hard to get to know you and get to understand what your jobs are. Um, I, I really appreciated my visits out at Kansas City and Indianapolis. I think I shook everyone's hand out there that was at least at the office. Uh, and um, and uh, it, it was really nice to see uh, people live in person. Um, and then, you know, I'll continue to float through the B ring and the C ring and the D ring and the P A and E, like a remote site down on the second deck. Uh, pretty nice spaces down there. Um, and, and when I come around, it, you know, I try to talk to different people as I come around. I don't always have time to go to everyone's desks, but I know kind of where I've been and where I haven't been. And so I will pop in on you every once in a while. If, you, if I'm like over your shoulder and I'm saying like, hey, what are you working on? It's because I'm curious, you know. I learn something new every day from you all. Uh, I am not uh, an expert in a lot of the things that you do, um, nor should I try to do what you do. Um, you do what you do for the team. I would just like to know and understand and appreciate better what you all do. So, but, uh, but thank you and um, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we'll see you at the next town hall or the next time I'm cruising through your spaces. So thanks, see ya. Thank you, sir. Carry on, carry on. <laughs>